Aloha and welcome back to another Space Weather Update. My name is Alexis. This is the Ascension Diaries. I'm here to watch the consciousness of myself and our planet shift with the space weather. So let's get into today's video. So we have witnessed a fairly large volcanic eruption. So this is another second one after Iceland. Now we have over by Sumatra, West Sumatra, blown up over by Indonesia. Large eruption yesterday. So in the daylight obviously for them and while we were sleeping <laughs> here in the in the west but we are going to cover a few things in this video that weren't covered yesterday because i took yesterday off for the solstice we have some solar flares to get to we have some news to get to so let's jump right into it those of you who are seeing the trending here which has now become a theme of these videos the trending is, again, XRP is like number one right here on this page. You can see the others there. Take take a look at it just for a second. I'm going to start looking at the, the, the coin market cap in these videos really quickly just to see the behavior of what is trending on X, the conversations. We're seeing that XRP is obviously in top six. They're currently trending down, but have had a lot of progress over the last 24 hours, which we've been watching. We've been watching quite a few of the, the cryptos go up and the market move in the last 24, 48 hours. So just a heads up on that. I wanted to show you very quickly the multi-planet systems discovered in the Milky Way galaxy by the Kepler Space Telescope. So I'm going to just open this up for you and just show you that the Kepler Space Telescope is seeing all of these bodies in the Milky Way galaxy around our solar system, it looks like they're orienting it. So just a, just a perspective shift, shift for you guys that we're actually able to push stuff out, objects out into space. They're able to go far enough out to witness and understand a better perspective about what's moving around us. And this particular graphic is showing you the heat of all of these items too. So some of them are entirely lava. Some of them are earth equivalent temperature. So those who are, those are more earth-like are the darker blue color or the more vibrant blue color. And then once they start going into white and then into orange and red, they're getting hotter, obviously. So a fascinating, a fascinating um, graphic. I'm, I'm absolutely loving this. So I'm glad that I stumbled across that. I just, it was just my mind expanding. So I wanted to show that to you. So since again, I took yesterday off the 21st, there was multiple solar flares in that window. So on the 20th, I warned you 21st, it happened. Now it's the 22nd and I'm going to review it really quickly for you. So here we go. This is the 20th, the 21st and 22nd. So the footage blew through the last two, three days. If you didn't just watch that, that's not normal for it to speed through that window of time. So I'm going to see if this one does the same thing because I didn't double check this before I started filming because I wasn't expecting that to happen. Some of these things will glitch though. This one especially will speed up really quick. Yeah. So they're speeding up through many hours. There's many frames missing from the 21st and those solar flares. So I can't even properly show you an example about what that solar flare looked like with this particular tool but I have the data right here so here again in the last three days here's the activity so here I was on the 20th telling you everything was chill but there's solar flares coming here is that solar flare it was an M class mid M class solar flare so it got up there and then we had another one that wasn't as powerful quite but I would say you know, decent size, decent size. And we've had a few littler ones since then, but so we've had two solar flares, major solar flares, M-class solar flares since I've talked to you last. There's also talk about the major prominence that was coming off of the sun. So I have some footage of that because for solar cycle 25, I've noticed this pattern the most is not just the solar flares have been way more active, which is you know, you can see that everywhere. Everyone's talking about that. The amount of solar flares this year, the amount of sunspots and so on. It's, it's huge compared to other years in our past, like when the solar cycle is more calm, like in 2018. But there's these prominences that have been really interesting. And I would say underplayed 
And I don't even know as much of the science around these particular prominences that do happen because the energy in the area is just so crazy. So watching these prominences come off the sun that are just massive has been really interesting for me this year and an unexpected part of the study. So I would encourage you when you see them to really dig into it, tap into it, you know, intuitives, I'm talking to you. It's it's a, another part of the conversation that I feel like isn't quite getting its, its, I would say, fullness recognized yet, if that makes sense. See, they're missing activity off the west limb as well. Ooh, they got a little bit of the footage. Okay, that was good. A little bit of the footage. As you can see, it wasn't crazy. Here it is again. It actually flared a few times in a second, I would say, which happens. But uh, like, I, there it goes. See how much it's flashing in a way that's kind of like individual motions. And they kind of lump it all together in the data I've noticed, <laughs> which is fine. Um, we can clearly tell and feel that there was a solar flare. So remember in last video, I was telling you, I want you to try and feel the solar flares first, right? Uh, some of you did succeed in that and you messaged me yesterday and said, hey, I was just about to blah, blah, blah. And then a solar flare happened and I felt it and I'm talking to you about it. And I was like, thank you so much for, you know, reaching out because it makes me feel not alone because I'm doing the exact same activity. <laughs> so the sun is still super active. You know, this is actually making me think of something, which might be a little bit left field here, but feminine brain going on. But I'm seeing these sunspot groups, which look like they're actually twinning. Do you see that? There's twins inside of each of these storms. And then over here, there's triplets. And twins over here. Now, for me, I've watched a few of these over the years, and that doesn't ring a bell for me, the fact that they're accentuating this. So uh, personally, my algorithms have been feeding me a lot of multiple birth announcement videos because they get a lot of views anyways, and I think they're interesting. But a lot of people on my algorithms lately have been getting the announcement that they're pregnant with twins, with triplets, with quadruplets, okay? Now, as a scientist who's never seen this phenomena really, you know, get any footing in my whole 30 years on this planet, I'm looking at this phenomenon going, is the algorithm just feeding me the concentrated data about this and this is normal for our planet or has something changed? And uh, that is more the direction that I'm going because, again, as a scientist, I've witnessed what has happened to the... I would say the livestock of human beings on the planet who aren't taking their own responsibility for themselves, but giving their power away to the system and letting the system tell them what to do. That group of people may also start now having triplets and twins because of the shifts that have happened in that particular livestock adjustment. So that is fascinating. That is just how my brain is thinking. I'm trying to explain it to you without triggering anything, but you know... <laughs> I just have to say it and now I'm seeing it on the surface of the sun it's making me think about it again so I'm just telling you just letting you know woman to woman woman to my brothers out there this is something I'm seeing and let me know if you know anybody also having twins or triplets because the odds of that are insane and if you even know anybody that's just in a way proving that what I'm seeing is happening <laughs> and we should keep investigating that phenomena for sure. So here on spaceweather.com, you can see the solar wind speed has finally calmed down. We're below average, so that's fantastic. Out here in the Sonoran de Desert, it is raining over here. We're raining. One sec, I'm going to come back to that. I'm just going to see what the article is today. Don't be surprised if there's more M M class solar flares today. Agreed. As they edge or get to the edge of our the sun or earth facing disc, right? So that's very normal. They're warning us. This is the M3 that happened yesterday. Well, it's saying technically it happened today. So maybe this is, yeah, no, I remember that that happened. So maybe it was, it was after 5 PM here. So it technically was December 22nd when it happened. We had an M3.33 class solar flare that happened. And I'm surprised it was actually not on the list. It's not telling me specifics with this particular list, which is kind of annoying. But 
whatever. <laughs> We've got the solar flare going. We've still got these beautiful clouds rolling out those polar stratosphere clouds in the north over by Norway. Over up over here, you guys, when they're all in the polar stratospheric, up all over here. So they're getting storms today. They might not see as much of those clouds this morning, but maybe still. Finland is getting a huge storm. Um, I would say Central Europe is the best way to describe this. Massive amount of water dumping over there, over here in western Turkey. And, of course, we've got <laughs> east coast of Canada and the United States are getting all of it over here. The Midwest is getting a big dose of rain. Over here in the Sonoran Desert, we're getting a big dose of rain. And over here in the Northwest, our beautiful wet Northwest wintertime, rain time valley over here is definitely getting some precipitation. South America, they're doing great, even though Brazil is definitely on the list this year. Brazil is the one going through the biggest shifts and it's being downplayed, but you gotta keep an eye on Brazil, okay, everybody? And over here in Indonesia is where that volcano is blowing up. They don't have as much storming over here. So I would say the most amount of water is dumping over Europe, over Finland, and over the United States right now. So that's where all the water and the energy is kind of finally grounding in from those last solar flares. We're seeing activity in Italy in the electromagnetic, extremely low electromagnetic spectrum, which is also where we walk around and where the mammals on Earth are hanging out. We hear this, we feel this, but we can't physically hear it yet. It's underneath our ability to physically hear, but our, we're still in the vibration of it, so we are experiencing it anyways. So there is quite a bit of disturbance going on, and it has been going on for like 24 hours. So if you're in Italy and you're feeling disturbed, if you guys have woke up feeling anxious or like you can't release, like your nervous system's having a hard time going into that parasympathetic mode, okay, this might be the problem. Am I seeing evidence of it in Russia? I am. Is it as intense? I would say it's about equal, if not less. But again, things are starting to look a little less human. But there was a note I needed to make in Russia, and you know, fortunately for us, but in a way I'm not all I'm also kind of concerned. But we can see there's kind of a cross going on over here, which isn't very common to happen. So that is very bizarre, and I believe that was the moment that the, the Q factor for the second Schumann resonance behaved very oddly in that time. And so that's a frequency of about 14 hertz. And so the behavior, the Q factor of 14 hertz approximately, I mean, I can give you the exact it moved around a lot too so the second frequency not only moved quite a bit from its normal but it also hit a q factor that was very concentrated so that's also what we were seeing on the first chart was that weird cross motion there was something going on there so can i explain it to full depth i wish i could if i do go any farther that's when things start getting a little bit Harry, I want to say, and I'm trying to be the peacekeeper here on the planet, so we're going to move on, but bringing peace to this particular situation would be wise for us. The area between Russia and, well, okay, whatever, but the area, this beautiful little ridge right here that's kind of underwater, but it's basically the extension of Alaska that goes pretty much all the way to Russia, this bridge over here, even though there's also very extreme closeness here with an earthquake, like these two tips are basically kissing. There's a little island between them. You can look up this whole area. It's very important. They're in cahoots. This whole area has got to talk to each other. And there's a lot of volcanic activity happening here. And that's what the recent reports are, is that there's a lot of buildup of volcanic activity happening right in this area. Which is important to me, in my opinion. I think that's good. Is there any big earthquakes happening over where it's raining? A little bit one over here. Not too bad, not too bad. Our big superstar stuff is happening over here in Indonesia. Our biggest alerts. Let's see. Japan got our more recent 5.0. So Japan is recently shaking as well. So that's good to know. Global consciousness, eh, not so great. Things are getting unconscious today, 
we were conscious when everyone in the West was asleep and now everyone's waking up and things are getting crazy. Not surprised. But one day I'm going to wake, open that up and be like, America's crushing it. Look at this coherency. I'm looking forward to that day. I know we can do it. <clears throat> Just quickly looking at the K index is chilling. There's nothing going on there yet. No aurora really. The solar wind is calmed all the way down. That's looking normal. Again, aurora looks normal. The coronal holes are pretty much non-existent. We're not dealing with any coronal holes, just sunspots, guys, which is, in my opinion, much more interesting and important. So there's a lot of sunspots. <laughs> the pressure around the Earth is looking pretty normal as well. There was an honorable mention to Abu Simbel in my field the last 24 hours. So those of you who are familiar with this particular area, I've been watching Circle, which is a music DJing sort of live performance YouTube channel and they've been setting up a lot of DJs in front of Egyptian monuments lately and I see them on my feed and I click them because I'm like this is unheard of you know this sort of thing in my brain is not normal and this is kind of like a new permission slip that's happening for these particular sites which I know are a lot of them are activated with sound medicine so the fact that they're playing what they're playing and they're in front of these things I'm watching very carefully um, last night we were watching an interview with a friend of ours actually who lives in Sedona she is I would say she runs Sedona in her own way but she also runs the traveling to Egypt and she connects a lot of Sedona structures that she sees in the rocks there to Egyptian structures and that's been a lot of her path. Anyways, she's been to the structure. She was guided through a doorway, she told us, that wasn't advertised. And the doorway led her inside of this particular structure and up a bunch of stairs to the parking lot where I guess she was supposed to be. So she took a shortcut through Abu Simbel to the bus, got on the bus, told them, and they go, that's impossible. There isn't, like the archaeologists on the bus were like, what are you talking about? There isn't a structure like that. You don't know what you're talking about, basically. And one of the guards of the area, in a way, they have their own secret layer there, but I don't need to get into it. But the guards there led her through this pathway, so they knew about it. And they decided that she was worthy of a little visit and a little bit of a scoot through this hallway. And she felt she was being watched the whole time. And it felt very alien to her, so non-human in a way, energy. And she has a sense for that, so I was listening. But I just wanted to let you know I've already been kind of tapping into this location multiple times. So if you know any more things about this, I think particularly maybe it has to do with the solstice even, let's look into it. This pot needs some love, as well as the snowy owl in general and the Harry Potter vibes is coming back. I'm going to be filming the next Harry Potter video today. I'm excited to tell the ladies that I saw that the snowy owl, owl is being pushed today, the 22nd, as the like Bing search of the day. So that's very cool. But I went a little bit, uh, I went a little bit off topic in this video, but those things all connect in my brain. So that's why I'm sharing them with you. But uh, yeah, we had this big solar flare that impacted yesterday. And this was the area of the earth that got hit. And this is the area of the earth that's now getting eruptions. So the volcano erupted after this particular impact. They're calling it an M4. But on my app, it was an M3.33. So it was pretty cool, the synchronicities. And that's the fun part of this job. Those of you who are interested, again, in moving your interest into cryptocurrency, today is a wonderful day. There's opportunity for you. We can take you in. Join.ConsciousCrypto.info for this particular service because XRP is trending and so on. It's, it's so funny to watch all these things all interlock and make sense, but that's our beautiful system that we're in. So everything is related. We just got to figure out quite how sometimes we're not taught so we have to remember <laughs> so i'm glad to be here as part of the remembering with you and i will see you on the next video thanks guys